you all have a history you all have a history from where god brought us this far we all have a history of sinfulness history of nothingness history of extreme poverty but the lord was gracious enough to lift us to bring us this far do you believe that yes. through the call of matthew today's gospel is reminding us remember from where we have reached this far pope francis reminded in the year of mercy he said there is a beautiful portrait in vatican this portrait is call of levi call of matthew the portrait is jesus is entering into the place where matthew was collecting tax there were many people jesus ended there and the portrait shows jesus is pointing his finger to matthew and matthew is pointing the finger to himself matthew could not believe matthew is asking is it to me matthew is calling jesus is calling matthew there are many people he is collecting tax there are many kinds of categories of people the master entered there and the master is telling follow me matthew could not believe because he has heard a lot about jesus the master the teacher the whole society honor him he is a miracle worker he is a powerful healer he is the messiah people say matthew have heard now he has come into the place where he committed sin and jesus is telling come follow me matthew could not believe he is telling jesus master you are mistaken you don't know who i am i am a tax collector i am an outcast people hate me if you call me they will desert you nobody wanted to be associated with me you are wrong you may be calling somebody else i am not worthy i am only a tax collector a big sinner for the society i am an outcast nobody should even talk to me and are you calling me jesus said i know you matthew come sisters and brothers matthew wrote this gospel and he said call of levi call of a tax collector i was a tax collector a very big sinner this is matthew's gospel matthew is telling who was i how my master called me made me his servant and lifted me high sisters and brothers if we do not forget our past from where our master lifted us we will always be humble and grateful before the lord most of us we are struggling because we always forget the great goodness of the lord in our history praise the lord praise hallelujah praise hallelujah, hallelujah. I do remember a mother brought a girl the mother said father my daughter is 13 years she is so reckless she is very unfaithful she does not believe in god she rebels against me she just do the opposite of whatever i am saying i can find she is moving around different boys father i am very ashamed i am afraid i feel very angry with my daughter she is very bad can you just make an exorcism prayer so that my daughter may be set free because i think she is completely gone away gone astray from god while we were praying we got a word of god from saint paul's letter to titus chapter 3 2 to 5 titus chapter 3 2 to 5 to speak evil of no one to avoid quarreling to be gentle to show every courtesy to everyone for we ourselves were once foolish disobedient led astray slaves to various passions and pleasures passing our days in malice and envy despicable hating one another but when the goodness and loving kindness of god our savior appeared he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done but according to his mercy hallelujah, hallelujah. please raise your right hand and repeat this word of god after me for we ourselves were once foolish disobedient led astray slaves to various passions and pleasures 
passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God appeared, He saved us according to His mercy. He saved us according to His mercy. So this mother is complaining about her 13 year old girl who is going astray and the Lord is asking this mother What about you when you were 13 years? You were very obedient, very humble, you were so holy, you were going to church every day This mother said keeping her head down in a low voice Truly speaking father I was worse than her then the Lord is telling, remember the mercy of God came to you. If God had forgiven you, showed mercy to you, when you went astray, when you were 13 years, God will also show mercy to your daughter. Don't judge her. As we read in chapter 3 verse from 2 in Titus, therefore to speak evil of no one. Therefore don't speak evil to your daughter. Avoid quarreling with her to be gentle and to show every courtesy to your daughter. Therefore, she will know that God who saved you, changed you, showered mercy upon you, will also shower mercy upon your daughter, upon her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that your daughter, your son, those whom you think is, is very bad today, do you think... They are better than you? Definitely. When you believe like that, you are close to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saint Paul, the more he came close to God, he is telling, this is 1 Timothy 1, 13 to 15. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 13 to 15, he said, Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is sure and trustworthy and full of acceptance that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. I am the sinner foremost, St. Paul says. And he says, I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence, but God showed mercy to me. This is what he is writing in his epistle saying, If I have received mercy, though I was such a huge sinner, I have committed blasphemy, I involved in, in uh, persecuting others, I was a man of violence, though I committed terrible sins, though I am the number one sin in the whole world, my God not only forgave me, showered mercy upon me, therefore you all have, who read my epistle, you have hope, the same God who showered mercy upon me, forgave my sins, will also forgive you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In the past, in our place where I am born in Kerala, many plants, many small plants in the field were considered to be a weed. Those were good for nothing. It is spoiling the earth and it will not let other uh, good plants to grow. So they used to remove it. But later they made a scientific research and they found those so-called weeds, those so-called plants which they considered to be useless, through research they found they are very precious medicinal plants. And now they are very precious. Actually now only those plants they, re they re remain, they keep and the other things they remove because uh, out of ignorance they we treated, our forefathers treated those plants as useless, worthless as a weed. But later they found they are not weeds but they are very precious medicinal plants. Praise the Lord. Once upon a time some of our family members, even maybe our own parents, considered some of us as a weed. Even told us, 
you are good for nothing, you are not studying well, you are not like your brother, your sister, and they never expected something good out of you. If you were treated like that, please don't raise your hands. Keep it inside you. But you know today the truth. You are that most precious child in that family. There was a time you were mistreated, you were never asked for an advice, you were considered to be a black sheep. But today you know, for anything, they need your help. There was a time you have been gone through a lot, a lot, but God proved you are not a weed, but you are a precious plant, a precious creation of the most high God. Why God treated you like that? Let us go through this word of God in the gospel of Matthew chapter 13. This is from 30. This is about the parable of weeds among the wheat. This worker told the master, Can I remove the weeds? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is telling, don't remove the weed today. Because the so-called weed today can be a very precious plant tomorrow. Spiritual fathers say like this, Saint Therese of child Jesus, little Therese, encountered Jesus when she was just 13 years. At the age of 24, she already died and she became a profound saint at the age of 24. But however, Saint Augustine encountered God only when he was 33 years. He led a very sinful, miserable life until 33 years. So if we look at Augustine when he's 23 years, we'll make a comment that why this man is living on this earth. He is a terrible sinner. He's wasting this earth. He's wasting this life. He is pulling many people into sin. It is better for Augustine to die. Out of ignorance, out of short-sightedness, we make such comments that Augustine is a worse sinner without knowing from 33 years, this Augustine is going to be such a great saint in the kingdom of God. Saint Nicholas of Flu from Switzerland, he only started to follow Jesus at the age of 60, after 60 years old. He lived in a cave in Switzerland in near Zurich. I myself visited his cave. He lived only with the Eucharist 20 years. Sometimes priests don't visit, sometimes priests visit. When they visit, they celebrate Mass, they give communion. This is the only food Nicholas had. But it happened after 60 years. If you look at Nicholas when he is 50 years, you don't find anything good come out of this man. Today, as you are seated here, that particular person going through your mind, your son, your husband, your father, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, you may think they are a worse sinner. Stop thinking like that right now. They may be a saint in the making, in the mind and heart of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can convert anyone at any time because God is merciful. Look at that thief hanging at the right side of Jesus cross he just told Lord remember me when you come into your kingdom if he could reach God even at just before his last breath we as humans have no authority to judge anyone on the basis of their life today what you see through your eyes Jesus said I judge no one John chapter 5 verse 30 I judge no one. I cannot do anything on my own. I only he do what I hear from my father. I judge no one. Who says Jesus, who has eyes that are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. He who can see everything. He whose eyes are more brighter than 10,000 times brighter than the son. He says, I don't judge. But what about us? We have only two eyes. And these two eyes also, we don't have proper eyesight. 
and still we judge judge not if jesus called this matthew from his sinning place showered mercy matthew is telling i know the gospel me i was a sinner he showered mercy upon me he changed me you will also be changed hallelujah in his time in his most precious time that is why we read in the book of sirach chapter 39 and 15 to 17 all those who have so many questions questions about god questions about faith question about your parents question about prayer there are so many people who have so many questions even those who are seated here the word of god gives an answer for all those who have questions this is sirach 39 15 to 17 sirach 39 15 to 17 ascribe majesty to his name and give thanks to him with praise with songs on your lips and with harps this is what you shall say in thanksgiving all the works of the lord are very good and whatever he commands will be done at the appointed time no one can say what is this or why is that for at the appointed time all such questions will be answered no one can say what is this or why is that for at the appointed time all such questions will be answered kindly raise your hands and repeat after me no one can say no one can say what is this what is this or why is that why is that for at the appointed time for at the appointed time all such questions will be answered all such questions will be answered hallelujah hallelujah my dear sisters and brothers what we have to do whatever may be the situation you lose your job you lose your business you have been mistreated you are imprisoned a case is filed against you you are going through a lot of misunderstanding suffering you have been terminated from your job what you need to do give thanks to god because god can bring good out of evil in your life i do remember in nairobi kenya one day the retreat was going on and god gave a message like this there is a particular lady she is so much persecuted by her boss in the company so you are thinking of leaving that job but you don't know where to go what is other job you can get you got this job after much struggle but because of persecution humiliation insult you think better you go for another job better to be jobless than to suffer humiliation but the holy spirit is telling you hold on to this humiliation hold on to this persecution you will be the next boss of your company if you hold on she took this message silently one month later the the ceo of the company made a, a new arrangement that boss was removed to another office and this particular lady was put as the boss of that same company praise the lord no one can say no one can say what is this or why is that for at the appointed time all such questions will be answered hold on to the suffering hold on to the persecutions hold on to the humiliations as we read in sirach chapter 2 2 to 4 sirach 2 2 to 4 the scripture says set your heart right and be steadfast and do not be impetuous in time of calamity cling to him and do not depart so that your last days may be prosperous accept whatever befalls you and in time of humiliation be patient sisters and brothers your last days may be prosperous if you hold on to humiliations praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah when you are going through a suffering when you are going through a persecution god has a plan for you he's making you a disciple out of you hallelujah 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 saint augustine wrote in the diary he committed terrible sins and he wrote lord why did you permit me to commit all these sins and to bring shame upon your name if you had killed me when i was just 22 years old i could not have committed such a terrible filthy sins and bring shame to you now i feel so guilty and bad how did i could do that after he got converted augustine became very sad because even when he think about the, the the bad things he has done he felt very guilty he's questioning god why did you permit to happen that you could have killed me 
It would have been better for me. Why did you permit me to bring shame to your name, to humiliate you? Then Augustine heard a voice in his ears from God. Jesus told Augustine, my son, I permitted it. My son, I permitted it. Permitted it so that first, so that you may be humble and rely on God. If you rely on yourself, this is what you do. You can only commit sin with your own power and talents. You need me even to speak a good word. So I made you, I permitted you so that you may be humble. And the second thing, so that you may be merciful, so that you may be compassionate to those people who commit a sin like you. You have no right to judge a drunkard, a womanizer, a sinner, a tax collector, a, 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 anyone who is into bad habits. You have no right because I have forgiven you. Sisters and brothers, Augustine got converted, became a priest and then a bishop. Augustine wrote many pastoral letters. Augustine never ever accused anyone. Whenever he advises people, he just writes like this, even me, I was a, a sinner forgiven by God. After all, I received mercy. I hope you will also receive that same mercy from our same Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Today, as we are seated here in this Tabor Ashram in the, on this first Friday, the Lord just wanted to tell you to remember the mercy you have received from your God. Show this mercy to others. The same way God was compassionate to you, be compassionate to others. Be gentle the way your God is gentle to your brother, to your sister, to your in-laws, to whoever you are dealing with. That's the way you become a true disciple of God. You have received forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, do you think God has forgiven your sins? All those who believe your terrible sins are forgiven by God, kindly raise your hands. So he wants you to do the same for others. Forgive the sins of others. Never judge them. Never accuse them. Never accuse your children. Never blame them. By fighting with them, shouting at them, barking at them, you can't change your children. By reminding God's mercy, by compassionately praying, you can convert them. Hallelujah. 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 I do remember in my life, some years back, I had committed a terrible sin after becoming a priest. And I felt very sad. I confessed. Even then I felt guilt, guilty that being a priest, after having uh, received such great mercy, I was not supposed to bring humiliation to God. I went to a priest, I made confession. But even after confessing, I felt guilty. I did a penance given by the priest. So I did another personal penance to convince Jesus that I am so sorry for the sin I have committed. And I prayed at stations of the cross as a personal penance for the sin I committed. Now I want to know how will Jesus deal with me? How will he look at me? Will he treat me the same way he was treating me? Will he shower his unconditional mercy to me as if I have never committed a sin? How he will approach me? I was so afraid to face God because I committed this sin. But after, and after confessing, doing this personal penance, I asked Jesus, please Lord, can you speak to me? Are you comfortable with me? Are you happy with me? Or are you very, very upset? I closed my eyes. I have a habit of taking the Bible, keeping my hand on the Bible and pray like this, my Lord Jesus. I have no one in this world to give me an answer, to show me a direction. But I know you are the word made flesh. You are hiding in the Bible. When I open the Bible, please speak to me. With this great devotion, whenever I want to take a decision, I want to know the will of God, I open the Bible and I keep my finger closing my eyes. Whatever I get, I read. That day I open the Bible, 
and I saw the face of Jesus inside my Bible. And as I was reading, I saw the lips of Jesus were moving. He told me, my son, it's me inside the Bible. It's me who is talking to you directly from the Bible. And he spoke. This is Psalm 6620. He spoke. When I was asking, how do you deal with me now? What's your approach? He said, Psalm 6620. Blessed be God because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Kindly raise your left hands and repeat after me. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Because he has not rejected my prayer. Because he has not rejected my prayer. Or removed his steadfast love. Or removed his steadfast love. From me. From me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, I have all the reason to love Jesus. Because he has not rejected me. Though I committed sin, he is telling my son, I have never removed my steadfast love from you. There is no one like Jesus. Sisters and brothers, that same Jesus is your God. We may have committed many sins. If Jesus, if God is going to open these sins, we need to go and hide under the Pacific Ocean because the sins that we committed, terrible. But God not only forgiven us, he has hidden these sins from the sight of others. He is treating us as if we have never committed a sin. He just wants us to do the same, to do the same to others. Never judge them. Be merciful, be kind, be compassionate. We are a retreat in UK. This is couples retreat. The husband and wife have to attend the retreat and after that we have counseling. The husband and wife came for counseling. And the wife told, she started talking, she said, Father, I don't know what is wrong with, with me or with my husband. He never appreciates me. He always gets angry. He will open the mouth only to shout at me. He, he never appreciates. I feel life is very difficult with this man. But he never tells me what is good in me. He only finds mistakes. He only corrects. I feel very sad. Then, but he never tells me exactly what is wrong, if I have doing something wrong. So I asked this man, do you, what she is telling, is it right? He said, yes, it is right, it is right. So I asked him, why? Father, it, I think it's my duty to correct when somebody does a mistake. She tells that I have never appreciated her. Father, I have an advice to tell you. Tell her to do something good so that I appreciate her. If I don't see good, Father, I don't know how to appreciate. If she does only mistake, only mistake. So I told him that, so who gave you the right to correct? He said, Father, I, may, I am the husband, the head of the family. I have the right to correct when I see the mistake. Father, she does not even know how to wash the plate. After eating food, every time I see something remains there. After all these years, if she does not know even to wash a plate, Father, how miserable it is. And she tells me I have to appreciate. I cannot appreciate nonsense. I am a man. I need to see good things. If she does good, I will appreciate. We told him, you are totally wrong. If you really know who Jesus is. He told me, how can you say I am totally wrong? I don't correct if, I, if she has done no mistake. You ask her, I never correct anyone if I don't see the mistake. So I have seen her drawbacks and I corrected. We told him, this is Isaiah 42, 19 and 20. Isaiah 42, 19 and 20, this is about Jesus and the character of Jesus. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf like my messenger whom I send? Who is blind like my dedicated one, or blind like the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. Repeat this word of God. 
He sees many things. He sees many things. But does not observe them. But does not observe them. His ears are open. His ears are open. But he does not hear. But he does not hear. This is about whom? This is a prophecy about Jesus. He can see many things. He can see all our imperfections, our weakness and our impurities. But he does not observe them. He can hear everything that we speak, every sin we commit. But he does not hear those things. That is the gentleness of Jesus. We told this man, you have no right, no authority to correct the mistakes of your wife unless you pray over her. You have that grace. If the most holy supreme God did not correct, did not hurt, did not offend, did not humiliate any human, when he had all the right to do that, you have no right to hurt anyone. You have no license to declare you are the head of the family, you can do whatever you want. You, have, you cannot, you can correct others. No, let no one misguide us. God is gentle. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of compassion. His character is gentleness. Many of us hurt others thinking we have a right to hurt others. Let no one misguide us. If Jesus did never correct, never hurt others, correcting means you can correct when you have the authority, divine authority over that. That means he asked, so you are telling you, will, you should never correct anyone? We said, no. You can pray one hour for your wife and you can correct for five minutes. If you have not prayed for your wife, you have no authority to speak any word to her because you have no, you have no authority to hurt anyone. Isaiah, as Matthew 18, 14. My father in heaven does not want any of these little ones be lost. Take care that you don't hurt any of these little ones. This is Matthew 18, 10. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven, the angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, today, the Lord is just telling us one important thing. Do you remember the mercy I have showered upon you? Shower that mercy upon your brothers and your sisters. Do you remember I have forgiven you? Forgive your brother and your sister. Do you remember what I have done for you in your life? Do those same charitable kind acts to your brother, to your sister. Do you remember that I have never judged you? Please don't judge others. Matthew, with his call, he is telling, I remember who I was, a tax collector, an outcast, a rejected one. But my master came into my place and he told me, Matthew, I want to call you the way you are. You are not rejected. You are, an, you are not an outcast. Come, follow me. Matthew is telling, now I know my God is merciful. He can do that same to all of you who read my gospel. When you read my gospel, you know from where I am coming. I am not ashamed to acknowledge how pathetic my life was and my master raised me up. Today, as you are seated in this Tabor Ashram, we all have a history. History of the goodness of God. History of the mercy of God. History from where God lifted you high, made you to complete your studies, helped you to have food to eat, made you to have your own house, made you to have your own job. He has really merciful to you. Be merciful to others. Never take revenge. Never be in competition. Never be in comparison. Never criticize or correct anyone. You need to have that same character of Jesus Christ who is meek and humble of heart. Praise the Lord. Pray after me. Abba Father. Abba Father. Please give me a new heart. Please give me a new heart. Your heart. Your heart. That is kind. That is kind. To the wicked. To the wicked and to the ungrateful. And to the ungrateful. Abba Father. Abba Father. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. That is kind. That is kind. To the wicked. 
to the wicked and to the ungrateful and to the ungrateful lord jesus lord jesus give me your heart give me your heart that is gentle that is gentle and that is meek and that is meek oh jesus oh jesus remove from me remove from me the heart of stone the heart of stone and put within me and put it in me your heart your heart the heart of flesh the heart of flesh oh holy spirit oh holy spirit create in me create in me a clean heart a clean heart oh holy spirit oh holy spirit give me give me a clean heart a clean heart i surrender my life to you i surrender my life to you hallelujah 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 the lord wants us to stop judging criticizing losing hope if god can convert you at the age of 38 if god can bring you more close to god he can do the same for your children when you see your children going away going astray from god from the age of 14 up to 23 you see you were also like that you came back so your children will also come back be kind to them pray for them unceasingly your grandmothers your mothers prayer brought you back to god the same way be prayerful be kind and god will bring them back to god hallelujah hallelujah let us offer everything on this altar as we sing offer to him